the Carthaginians originally came from Phoenicia, located on the coast of the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. They founded their city of Carthage as colonists around the 8th century BC. When their capital Tyre fell to the Babylonian king, I dare you to pronounce his name, Carthage became the last great sovereign city of the Phoenicians. And they inherited all remaining colonies on the North African and Iberian coast and some of the Mediterranean islands. Already in the 13th century BC, the Phoenicians began their reputation as renowned and very skilled seafarers. They became rich from trading high value goods like ivory, gold, silver and so on. The Carthaginians proudly followed up on their Phoenician heritage of being traders and skilled seafarers. Carthage was located in modern day Tunisia near the capital Tunis. Carthage had two beautiful harbours, an inner and outer. Her location was excellent for seagoing trade and she prospered. But the wealth and power of Carthage didn't go unrivaled. In the 6th century BC, Carthage came into conflict with the expanding Greeks over possession in Spain, Massalia in present-day France, and crucially in Sicily. The wars lasted 200 years, with Carthage emerging the victor in spite of heavy losses. Massalia and Syracusa remained Greek, but the other areas became Carthaginian or Punic. By the way, Punic is the term used by the Romans to refer to the Carthaginians. It comes from Phoeniches, as the Greeks called them. The rivalry attitude that the Greeks and the Carthaginians had caused the Carthaginians to try and keep all their sea explorations, discoveries and most importantly their trade routes secret. The Carthaginians did spread word about their voyages to England but they told everyone that the English Channel was filled with sea monsters to scare the Greek traders and explorers away. Around 500 BC, Carthage sent out explorers, Hanno and his brother Hamilco, with supposedly 60 ships to explore and colonize the Atlantic coast of Africa. Hanno's exploration of the Atlantic coast of Africa is still however debated as to where exactly Hanno's exploration got him to. Historians consider three places that he could have reached. Historians agree that he at least got as far as Senegal, because his records of his journey stated he found hippos in an estuary of a river he thought to look like the Nile. That river was probably the river Senegal. The second place is Guinea because Hanno's account of his journey mentioned a large mountain and Guinea's 890 meter Mount Kakulima could fit his description. However, some historians say his description of the mountain better fits Mount Cameroon, which is 4040 meters, so it would be more notable to put it in his records if he saw this mountain. That the Carthaginians traded with the native population of Sub-Sahara Africa is shown in the accounts of the Greek historian Herodotus. I will now quote his account on how the Carthaginians exactly did their trade with these native peoples. Quote, the Carthaginians tell us that they trade with a race of men who live in a part of Libya beyond the pillars of Heracles. On reaching this country, they unload their goods, arrange them tidily along the beach and then returning to their boats, raise a smoke. Seeing the smoke, the natives come down to the beach, place on the ground a certain quantity of gold in exchange for the goods and go off again to a distance. The Carthaginians then come ashore and take a look at the gold. And if they think it presents a fair price for their wares, they collect it and go away. If on the other hand, it seems too little, they go back aboard and wait and the natives come and add to the gold until they are satisfied. There is perfect honesty on both sides, 
the Carthaginians never touch the gold until it equals in value what they have offered for sale. And the natives never touch the goods until the gold has been taken away. So the fact that the Carthaginians were able to sail to the West African coast and return safely made historians think they could have gone much further than previously thought. There is an even more interesting account from Pliny the Elder, who was a Roman author, naturalist and natural philosopher. His account stated that Hanno actually managed to circumnavigate the African continent, all the way from Gades, which is now modern-day Cadiz, to Arabia. I hope you enjoyed part 1 of this video, leave a like if you did and comment on what you think of this topic. To watch part 2 of this video click right here and I'll see you in part 2.